what's up? Um, I'm at one of our customers' homes right now, and we're doing one, two, double power wall install um, right here in my hometown of Gardner. I'll show you um, a little bit about the project and what we did today before we jump into my system. But this is a, uh, here we are. This is the basement and here's our Tesla gateway. This is what we installed today. So today we took the feeders out of this main service panel, which were coming into the back of the panel. So we actually shifted the service panel over six inches. This is where the underground service was coming into, which was the back of the panel. We took that out and we ran it into our gateway, which is now the main service panel for the house or main disconnect for the house now moving forward, since this is gonna control both power walls as well as our sun power panels that are on the roof. And then we ran the service back over to the main service panel and then they had like a code violation inside their service panel um, of the wires were undersized going into their sub. So we, uh, we fixed that for them as well. So all in a day's work, obviously you always wish you can get more done, but it's a lot of work. This is almost equivalent to uh, upgrading a main service because we're moving everything over into the gateway. We're separating all the grounds and the neutrals for the house and uh, tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our new generation panel, our combiner panel for the solar. We're gonna put both of our power walls right on that wall. We're gonna use a stacking kit and we're gonna put the 350 black panels on the roof. We're using the east roof as well as uh, the southern facing garage. So I'll keep you updated on this project. And now back into, uh, back into the man cave slash studio to check out my system and how we've been producing for the past week. I just uh, I just got home with pumped to make a video and do our one week recap video. We've had we've been running fully off the grid for the past seven days, and I go in my backpack to get my iPad so I could see what our performance has been, and I just left my iPad one hour away at a customer's house. We just did a site visit. I just did a site visit there. And uh, the customer's home is on, it's on a flat part of the hill, but the backyard is so steep and that's where we're putting the ground mount. And I just left my iPad in his backyard and it's one hour from my home. It's currently seven o'clock at night and I'm going to drive to his house, get the iPad now. So this video is to be continued and now that little voice eight hours later all right guys welcome back i got my ipad it was sitting in the field behind one of our homeowners houses an hour from here so guys it's pretty crazy i don't know what other way to say it we have been off the grid for over a week now like it's it, it's just normal now. Like it, it hasn't even phased us the past four days. I haven't been checking the iPhone. I haven't been checking the Tesla app to see how much power we have. The weather has been absolutely beautiful and I haven't had to worry about a thing. And it's just, it's crazy for me to think that we've been doing, like everything has been running in the house. My wife still asks me, is it, are, are we off the grid? Everything is just working. We're not sacrificing anything at this point. That range anxiety is gone. Everything is just working. And it's it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, there's no other way to explain it. I mean, I really, I, I'm gonna see how long this goes at this point. Uh, we'll, we'll go with these routines until the point of failure when I hit that day when it's just totally cruddy out, there's no power and uh, we, we got to flip the breaker back on, but we haven't even come close to that yet. And the weather today was, it was a crappy day today. It rained for half the day. It was gloomy. 
and right now our power walls it's um right now it's 940 at night and we're at 63 percent battery life on our tesla power walls right now we're going to do some pretty cool things uh later this week uh we'll make a video on this guy which i don't know if you guys have read up about it this is sense monitoring uh, we'll, we'll do a video and like an unboxing and a full recap on this, but this takes energy home usage to the next level. Basically, uh, the example I could use to, when you log into the test lab, you could see your production, your consumption. Um, but like if you have a light on in your refrigerator and you leave the door open, this could see like, there, it, like it identifies loads to, to that minute level so that'll be pretty cool we installed this for a couple of our customers um they were like why this is amazing like why didn't we ever why don't we always have this but this is just a next level home monitoring for consumption and seeing not just your home as a whole of like all right you use 50 kilowatt hours but to see like all right what used the 50 kilowatt hours was it the dryer was it the fridge like breaks it down so we'll do a video on that in the coming coming week uh we'll do the unboxing we'll do the installation and then we'll we'll check out how it is but right now let's just dive into the app i'll show you the past two days um what it looks like today's date is uh september 26 so we're at the end of the month we're going into october and right now we'll just we'll go right into it so we'll go into our energy usage We'll see our solar production. Oh wow, you could see like today was, we didn't have any, uh, we didn't have any bouncing today. Like we didn't, the, the solar didn't shut down at all today from what it looks like. Uh, it looks like we were holding production all day long. Um, yeah, we had no cutouts, meaning uh, the batteries were taking charge the whole day. Look at that, so the batteries now you could see throughout the day, the solar was just charging the batteries all day long. So we were, our batteries were, it doesn't look like we were filled up totally throughout the day. It looks like we got close, because I know when we got home we were at like 80%, so we never got to 100%. So that's pretty cool to see. We've never seen that before. I haven't seen that before. So solar was producing all day, charging the batteries all day. The batteries didn't get to 100% charge. We're currently at 63% charge right now. So that's awesome. We'll go to yesterday. So yesterday, you can see it was a it was a it was a sunny day yesterday, and production was bouncing yesterday. So look at that. Our high for the day was at uh, around a little, what time is this? 11.25 and we hit 9.5 kilowatt hours. And then you could see zero, one, zero, two, zero, one point seven. So it's constantly, the power wall is charged and there's nowhere else for the power to go. So it's bouncing, bouncing off. It's shutting, it's shutting the solar down. It's using the battery storage as the battery uses the consumption a little bit and it needs to fill the battery up then the solar kicks back on so that's pretty cool to see that so this was yesterday and the batteries were fully charged up by 12 in the afternoon so there was nothing to worry about yesterday when we were doing um when we we're running everything in the house we'll go back to the uh 26 25th, 24th we'll see okay so on the 24th the battery, the, the solar woke up at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Pretty crazy. You could see that it was a, a little bit of a wild day weather-wise. Our height uh, production was 10.7 kilowatts. That was at 11, 10 a.m. All throughout the day, we are still charging the batteries up. And then you could see right here, this is when the batteries were fully charged. Charged the batteries were all charged up at 220, and uh, 
then it was just doing the bouncing. It was fully, the, the batteries were, as the batteries were using, then it was turning the solar back on. We'll go to September 23rd, so we could check that out. Same exact thing, look at this, you can see. Um, so the solar turned on at seven in the morning. Our height of production was at 11.30 in the morning. We produced 9.3 kW, that was our, our height. And then our batteries were fully charged by 12.30. So that's the pattern that we're seeing right now. The batteries are, these three batteries are charged up by my 36 sun power panels by 12.30. And then after that, you know, it's bouncing. Again, solar's on, solar's off, battery's charging, battery's mm -hmm. using, solar's on. So we'll go back in another day, September 22nd. Wow, look at this day. Again, solar turned on seven o'clock. So I would use those sun power panels. They wake up super early in the morning. You know, and when you're looking at solar panels and you're looking at, oh, should I get a, you know, a, a cheap Chinese panel or should I get a panel that's gonna actually produce, that this is why you're doing it. The panel wakes up so early in the morning. It gets just based off light. It doesn't need direct sunlight. It just needs light when you get a high quality panel. So our batteries are charged by the uh, 1210. And then after that, solar's, you know, we're charging the battery. And the thing that's interesting here is you could see those spikes in usage throughout the day that we're using the battery. You know, we're pulling three kW, that's probably the dryer or the, but this is the afternoon, that's not the dryer. That would be the pool pump. And the pool is officially closed today. So today's the 26th, we closed the pool. So that's gonna stop a lot of drain on the power walls because that Hayward pool pump or Howard pool pump, I don't know how you say it, that, that definitely pulled significant kWs at different times of the day. So you can see here our usage, 1.7, 6.9. 6.9 .9 kW we were pulling at 5.30 at night. So we were really fully relying on those batteries from 4.20 on. The solar was down. Um, it was pretty much, by 4.45 it was, it was over with. It was, I think that was not the best day either. Now, if we go back another day, September uh, 21st, let's check out our solar. Solar's on at seven. Batteries are fully charged by 1045. This was a killer day. Good production on this day. And then you could see we're just bouncing. The solar's turning on and turning off because the batteries are completely full. The home is at a status quo as it's using and going back and forth. And then here's Friday, uh, September 20th. And it's the same thing. Batteries, uh, solar's waking up at seven. And the batteries are fully charged by 1110. Guys, so we'll keep the updates rolling. The system is producing. We're still 100% relying on the Tesla Powerwalls. I wanna go rip my meter off my house. That's how energized I feel. But I know, I know I'll hit that day when I have to flip that breaker back on. But right now, um, we're full in off-grid mode. And I started this, let me just look. How many days has it been? We started this on... Today's the 26th, um, Saturday. It's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 days. It's been full off-grid mode with three power walls in, I call this the powerhouse. Three power walls in the powerhouse and 36 panels on the roof. So, um, I don't know, I feel energized, I feel motivated that, you know, it just gives me real hope for the solar industry and how far we're coming along when each day that goes by and I'm still uh, fully powered by all of my own, you know, all of this from the sunshine off uh, onto these panels and 
that power going right into these batteries. It's just pretty amazing. So more to come. We'll keep you updated. Please like uh, this video if you thought it was helpful. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date as more things come along and uh, shine on. We'll keep seeing you. We'll keep updating you. Take it easy, guys.